So I have over 200 smartphones, and a lot of them is oldie but goodies of their time. So I'm starting a new series that's called Oldie But Goodies and How Smartphones Have Aged Over Time. So let's have us some fun. So in 2014, the Nexus 6 was released. One of my favorite phones, it was big, it was bulky, it was expensive, but it had some detrimental issues with it. So let's have a conversation and let's talk about the oldie but goodies. Sit back, relax, and get your popcorn ready and follow me on this journey. Let's go. What's up guys, this is Eric back with another video. So every tech enthusiast that loves smartphones, everybody that's in the smartphones know or even had the Nexus 6. So back in 2014, most people were shocked when they heard that the Nexus 6 was unveiled with a huge 5.9 inch 1440p 16 by nine aspect ratio. Listen, coming from a Nexus 5 that had a smaller 5-inch display, people were shocked. And they was also shocked about the price. The Nexus 6 came in at a whopping $649 for 32 gigs. Or you could get it for $699 for 64 gigs. Now, at that time, it was extremely high for a developer's phone. Definitely high. But as we talk about specs, let's go to the continue. This device had a 6.9 inch 1440p AMOLED display. It had the Snapdragon 805 processor, three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs or 64 gigs of internal storage, right? No SD card support. On the rear, we got a 13 megapixel camera with do LED flash. And then in the front, we have a very sad two megapixel camera. Now, powering the Nexus 6, we had a uh, 3220 milliamp battery. Now this device has some features. It had NFC, headphone jack, stereo speakers, and, and the cameras, it can shoot 4K 30 frames per second. But for the price, it was not on the same level as the Galaxy S5 or the Galaxy Note 4. It just wasn't on that level. So one of the unique things that I like about the Nexus 6 is the build quality. Yes, it was big. Yes, it was bulky, but it had a hump on the back that felt real good in the hand. And definitely watching movies and watching videos was great due to the dual speakers here in the front. Listen to this. So let me let y'all guys hear this. I like the front facing speakers on this device. Man, yes. Hear that? Wow. The front facing speakers on the Nexus 6 is, is nice. Full sound, full bass, everything's good. I like that. So one of the good things about stock Android it's performance. The Snapdragon 805 processor with three gigs of RAM, listen, in 2023 standards, that sound like a, a joke, right? But back in 2014, it did a great job. Now this device is running Android 7.1.1, which is end of life. Uh, but I was able to still run my favorite games with no problem. So check this out. So one of the things that I liked about the Nexus 6 is playing games on it with the huge display here. You get that very immersive experience. Plus the front firing speakers give you a really good gaming experience. So let me let you listen to how loud that is. You hear how loud that is? That is a very loud. And playing games, I mean, listen to that sound. And uh, so, yeah, playing games on this device was really good. I really like it. And I'm able to play my high-end games. Boom. Uh-oh. Let me turn it down a little bit so I can give you a little commentary. So, yeah, playing some high-end games on here is really good. I didn't have any issues playing some of my good title games on here, uh, like Dead Trigger 2 and stuff like that. It played very well. Now, I... I believe, yes, I do got the 64 gig Nexus 6. So I do have some good stores. Now, one of the things that we complained about with this device is that it didn't have SD card support. And that was a hindrance because if you think about it, if you think about it, right? 
I mean, you had your Galaxy devices had uh, SD card support at the time when this device got released. This device came out at a huge $699 price point. Uh, and this was the same time when the Galaxy Note 4 and the Galaxy S5 was out. Uh, and they had all the features. They had SD card support. They had very good cameras. They had a lot of good things going for it. Uh, and unfortunately, the Nexus 6 was not the device at that price point that was giving you everything, right? Yes, it was a stock Android device, but it just wasn't giving you the, the win all be all. Okay, so let's talk about why this phone failed, right? First, the display, even though it was huge and on paper, it sounds great. 1440p AMOLED display, it sounds great. Listen, Motorola put the worst display on the planet on this device. The colors was off, the calibration was off, the, the whites looked like a milky brown. It was a mess. Next failure on this device was the cameras. Listen, no doubt that these cameras was not great. It is not even a question about it. But again, let me show you some camera footage here with the Nexus 6. So check this out. All right, so here it is, right? This is the rear camera of the Nexus 6. Here's what I wanted to showcase uh, with these cameras. It wasn't that great because it was doing a lot of focused breathing. And uh, I wanted to kind of showcase that in this part of the video. Uh, now, as far as the still footage, the still footage is okay on this uh, device. But the uh, video footage, even though I'm shooting at 4K 30 frames per second, was not the greatest. Uh, and it, it never got fixed throughout the years. Uh, even with all the software updates, uh, somehow, some way, between Motorola and Google at that time, they could not do anything with this video camera. So, this is the Nexus 6 video camera, rear video camera, at uh, 4K, 30 frames per second. And as, as you can see, at that time, it was not that great. And even in 2023, it's still not that great. <laughs> so there it is. And lastly, the battery life. Oh God, the battery life. Listen, the battery life is horrendous on this device. I mean, listen, it's not even partially good. It was bad. Look, I've been using this device for a few days and I was topping out about two and a half to three hours of on screen time. And if I pump the screen brightness all the way up, which this is a very dim display, I was getting even less battery life. Look, the Nexus 6 battery life was bad in 2014 and it's bad in 2023. So here's my conclusion. The Nexus 6 was one of my favorite phones, even with all the flaws, right? I mean, it wasn't a great phone when it came out in 2023. It was high price, big, bulky, bad display, bad cameras, and everything else in between. But I really enjoy watching movies and videos on this huge display, even though the display is not that great, but it's still a good testament on the stereo speakers and the viewing experience on this device. I still play games here and there on this device, even though I'm not getting any updates. Now, I put my T-Mobile SIM in this phone, and yes, it still runs 4G. Now, unfortunately, this phone is not available to be purchased at all. Maybe you can find it on eBay, but when I looked it up on Amazon, I could not find this device on Amazon to be sold. But at the end of the day, I really like the Nexus 6. Listen, if you like these throwback videos that I'm doing, I'll leave your comments down below. If you had the Nexus 6, leave your comments down below. Let me know what your experience was with the Nexus 6. Mine's was a mixed bag. It was good because it was a big, bulky experience back in 2014, but it was bad because it did not live up to the hype in the par of modern flagships at that time when this device got released. I mean, this device got slammed by the Galaxy S5 that had very good specs, very good cameras, a beautiful display, good battery life. 
but this device was not there. This is Eric the Tech Preacher. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about the Nexus 6 in all its glory. See you guys on the next video. Peace.